In this video, we're going to look at how to make was do a SQL trace for DB2. So if you're having trouble in the logs and you're seeing something related to SQL and you want to see the SQL statements in an application that's running inside of was Web Server Application Server, these instructions will help you do that. So the first step is to log into Web Server Application Server and then on the left pane, go down to resources and then go to JDBC and then go to data sources and then from here you need to locate the server where DB2 is running and in our case that's this one here and the idea is that you'll click here this will take a second and then go over to the right where it says custom properties and you're only going to see by default the first I think 20 rows or so but what we want to do here is increase that to 9999 so that you can do a search without paging through all of the uh, all of the uh, entries now do a search for trace level and you'll come down here and you should see that set to negative one and negative one means you're going to get all of this kind of detail in the log but that detail won't be output to the log until you go down and enable it in the trace. So this is, if you've watched the previous video on tracing, this should be familiar territory. You go to logs and trace. Identify your server. We want this server. And then go down to change log detail levels and go to runtime. And then in here, you want to enter this string here. And if you're curious, you can go to components and groups and open this up, and then you'll see what all these refer to essentially. So for example, if we take com IBM WS for web sphere, you can go down here, we'll do it, com.ibm.ws, and then you will see these are the Java packages. There's one called DB2. And that is essentially what we are targeting as one of these things that we are targeting. So all messages in there. And the same applies for just all database. So once you've done that, you go down to the bottom and you click on OK. Now, as we've seen in a previous video, when you go to Logs and Trace, you select your server and then you go down to Change Log Level Details and then Runtime. Runtime means you do not need to reboot or restart the JVM. So you don't have to go up to Servers up here and then go down to your particular server and stop it and start it. But if you're having any trouble and you're not getting enough detail, you do want to stop and start it because it is we deal here with JDBC and that somehow may have an impact. So if if you're having trouble seeing the detail you want, just stop your JVM and start it again. But in theory, you don't need to do that. Now open up a, an SSH session. I'm using PuTTY here and we'll do a less plus F and go to this particular file, wherever your trace.log is located. And then you press enter and this less works like tail, except you can hit control C and now you can navigate through the file uh, using your arrows or uh, J and K like you would uh, use in Vim. Now, what we want to do is a search. So we're going to do a reverse search with a question mark. So I'll go from the bottom to the top. And then we're going to do, a, we're going to escape, that's a slash here. We're going to escape the left, less, uh, the left parentheses and then do a one comma. And I'm going to explain why we're doing that in just a second. Uh, now we're going to skip this first one and I'll explain that also in just a second. The way this works is that when you see a parameterized query, you will see a P statement. And this is the SQL statement that was run. And you'll notice there's a question mark in there. That question mark refers down here to the f number one. So the first question mark you see is the number one and the value that gets passed in is the second value listed here which is a one and that means you can copy this which is what we're going to do and paste it and run that uh, run that same SQL statement okay so that's what I've done here I'm going to press enter and we're going to get this error but that's only because I didn't include rows only at the end of the command, so be sure you've got the whole command, of course. Now, that will give you this result. And notice, too, that you, in your code, there will be a request to do a get a result set. So you can actually do a search here for result set, and you'll get these responses here. So it, you can use this to track down which result went bad and notice that you'll get execute query under here. So you'll see the result set and then you'll get execute query and it will return a value. And in this case, uh, it returned that value. 
It's also worth noting here too that we're really looking at JDBC in a lot of the cases here. So this is actually like the connection over JDBC. This should come as no surprise, but over JDBC to DB2. And remember too that according to this free red book that we've seen before, the second column that we're looking at is called the thread ID. So you'll notice that this thread ID is different from this thread ID, and so you want to be careful to be looking at the correct thread ID. Also notice that you get WSJDBC result S, and this is part of result set, and you get a 1 right when the uh, statement has closed. And then here I scrolled down a little bit, and you can see that the same thread essentially, it had a result set which it closed, and then it had the prepare, which it had actually started earlier on, also closed at this point. And then from there, the next entry that you see for CF is for log writer, which is now doing some other things. And then as I scroll down just a little bit more, notice that you'll eventually get to this get update count. So, so after it had ran its, um, after it ran the execute query, it did get more results in case it had more of them. And you can see that's uh, here, right? Our same thread, get more results. And it returned a false there and then went to get update count here and then you can see get update count again and finally basically it's going to return a negative one and once it returns a negative one for that same thread then at that point it's essentially finished it's going to do this clear parameters and the next step that you'll see is another thread can can happen but I mean you can see it it uh, attempted to clear the cache there's no unprocessed results so it ran through everything and then you'll get to this uh, the next entry whatever it is and then notice too that you can always inside Vim, well, where in less is the same. For what we're doing here, you can uh, select whatever you need, hit forward slash, paste that in here, and that will select all of just that thread. So you can, as you're going through all of these lines, very quickly identify the thread that you're that you're dealing with, where it starts and stops.